Hold on to your butts. We are changing the course of history as we see it. That is what Wesker demands. Now this affects Iris. Um, Iris, where are you? What you feel only matters to you. I do not entertain hypotheticals. The world as it is is vexing enough. Iris, I have a tip for you. Don't take drugs! Or whatever movies with Wesley and Iris. What up? Welcome to Or Whatever Movies. I'm your co-host, Wesley, and I'm here with my kind of sick little sister, Iris. Today, today, we are discussing a holiday classic. In this case, a Christmas movie. This is a shout out to That Baby and the Woo, who requested this. 1990s Home Alone. Home Alone, dude. Best trap. Best booby trap in Home Alone. Go. I, I'm i not sure that it was intended to be, but the spider was great. <laughs> we saw the spider a bunch of times. And then I liked the nail because it required the most setup. He had to tar all those stairs to put down like a roofing shingle to stick that nail through. Not to mention he had to get Marv's shoes off. Yeah, he got a free <laughs> pair of shoes out of it and socks. <sighs> the spider, one of the of many conveniences in this film. Uh, my favorite, probably the slippery stairs. A lot of physical comedy <laughs> yeah. there. The... <laughs> My least favorite, what was it? It wasn't caulk, was it? Yeah, it might have been caulk, like bathroom caulk, the caulk and feather. This is a family-friendly episode. Well, whatever that was, the sticky stuff that he put on the uh, saran wrap. The caulk he got all over his face. (laughs) So Joe Pesci walks into the saran wrap, smooshes it onto his face as he removes the saran wrap in disgust, and then he proceeds to get feathered. What is it? Is right. he supposed to be humiliated to death? That's an injury to his pride. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'd rather get the tar and feathering than the iron to the face. So, oh, man. I'll take it. But at least the iron can be made out of rubber or something. Real spider. And legend has it they didn't remove like the poison sack because they, and the stinger because they said that that would kill the spider. So they had to put it on Daniel Stern's face, and I guess he only allowed one, he only let them do that one time. Wow, that was a one take scream wonder. That was the best scream of the film. It, it was so good. All the, because he does like four spider screams. <laughs> And I think that they were all super good and high-pitched and genuine. I'm not 100% sure. There are conflicting reports as to whether or not he did that actual scream with the spider on his face. Because they may have ADR'd that later so he doesn't scare the spider so the spider doesn't stick him in the face. Oh, wait. He could have gotten stung at any point by a live tarantula? I guess so. And I haven't necessarily heard that tarantulas are the big, scary, poisonous spiders. They seem like scorpions. Like, the bigger they are, the, the more harmless they are. Yeah, I, I almost walked face first into the web of a golden orb yep. in Australia. The biggest, scariest looking spider ever. That apparently is not dangerous. Right? We got a picture of a golden orb in Croatia. It was like in an old boat on the side of the road. We'll have to compare pictures because it was the biggest, (laughs) biggest spider I've ever seen. But they're like all horny and stuff. Like all bumpy and scary looking. Like they have armor. I don't know how this G-rated episode is going. (laughs) It's going really well. Besides, I mean, except for the woo and that baby. Hi, guys. Who watched this movie in 2021. Home Alone is 31 years old now. Wow. Macaulay Culkin is older than you are. Wow. And yet he's forever frozen as little Kevin. Yeah. When he grew up, his eyes stayed in the same place. So they're kind of beady. But he was like pinnacle cuteness, right? Was there ever a kid aside from maybe Dakota Fanning in her like eight-year-old prime as cute and as prescient as Macaulay Culkin? Yeah, what about Jonathan Lipnicki? Uh, I guess so, but he felt more like a little kid to me. Even Joe Pesci said that Macaulay Culkin wasn't like a little kid. He was like an old soul. And and it's maybe this presence of mind that makes him feel like an adult actor, as opposed to Jonathan Lipnicki definitely felt like a little kid, where Kevin feels like an old soul trapped in a little baby body. I mean, that's the shtick, right? Is this toothbrush approved by the ADA? Right. You know, value shopping at the grocery store. 
give an old man what's his face advice at the church <laughs> old man shovel slayer old man marley was that a jacob marley reference uh no his the character's name was marley but it was that like a jacob marley christmas carol thing because if any movie is a christmas movie home alone <laughs> is a christmas home movie. alone is a christmas fantasy it's so red and green throughout and shiny every frame is christmasy oh yeah dun, 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 dun. and he's running home and the christmas light dun, 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 turning on you're like it's christmas it's coming but i agree a christmas adventure movie die hard for kids ferris bueller for kids in fact ferris bueller because obviously home alone was written by john hughes who also wrote ferris bueller's day off one of my favorites and he it really is like he's a little ferris bueller who can't go past the end of his driveway and stuff (laughs) A little Ferris Bueller in the making, although I think this is more of a Die Hard comparison because Die Hard is a Christmas movie and a darn good cocktail. Darn. Don't do drugs and don't drink, guys. What I want to talk about is how Home Alone is in a way timeless, but also super specific to 1990. Okay. Like Christmas is timeless and Christmas decorations can look the same now versus 50 years ago, except maybe some of them are updated with like LED lighting or something. Yeah, there was the multicolor big bulbs were like all the rage. And now it's all about LED, like neutral white lights, icicle lights, stuff like that. And also the snacks have updated, but not in this movie where we had prominent placement of Johnny Carson and Crunch Taters. Crunch Taters? When does he eat Crunch Taters? You didn't see the two prominent placements of Crunch Taters? And do you remember (laughs) Crunch Taters? Uh... No, I definitely remember him chowing down on a ice cream sundae that Lo- looked really awesome. Yeah, but crunch taters were like Louisiana spiced potato chips back in the day. And I hadn't seen or thought of crunch taters since this movie. And then most importantly, uh, the micro machines came into play. Micro machines. Well, I don't know if some of our listeners know what micro machines are, but they're cool. Don't swallow them. Uh, yeah, major choking hazard. But so answer me this. This movie has a very camera facing, fourth wall breaking kind of approach. It's like Kevin knows he's on TikTok or something. <laughs> but that's also a very specific approach, a la John Hughes, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Home Alone. That, but it makes it feel contemporary because 1990, when this movie came out, was well before social media, particularly live streaming or video recording social media. Well, let's talk about some of its contemporaries then. What did Home Alone come out in the midst of? Um, (laughs) Micro Machines? No, I mean movies. Oh. What came out in 1990? Uh, Well, the box office success of Home Alone trumped Predator 2 and Rocky 5 at the box office. Okay, not exactly at the same in the same demo, but well, I don't know. I mean, this is a gray area, just like for music, 1990 specifically, everything was kind of in transition. It's I guess this was a an original movie, although it traded on some of the John Hughes stereotypes from older movies, but it was at least an original movie in a movie in a year that was otherwise dominated by sequels. I think right. this was the year after Batman. It was definitely an original movie, but among some other Maybe that was the tone of the day was when these original movies still had a place. Total Recall came out. Dancing with Wolves, I assume, won Best Picture. Misery, Pretty Woman, (laughs) It. An interesting slate. All kids classics, right? (laughs) <laughs> so this was the quintessential movie for the kids in 1990 this is what they had to latch on to cornered the market on the kid four quadrant demographic right and maybe it was well placed to be a successful kids movie but i think kind of well deserved home alone is formulaic in a kind you know it turns this adventure kind of convention on its ear a few years after the goonies and it's mostly contained inside this one house but it also is a really good kids adventure movie as long as you understand that it's for kids and that it can't be taken seriously that a kid would much rather go to these lengths in his imagination to guard his hearth and home and his family's honor who he's banished <laughs> like uh who he snapped out of existence right with one wish right but never calls the cops I, I would fault the character for not calling the cops, even if he is a spirited kid, if it were a possibility. But this screenplay 
John Hughes go to, goes to great lengths to establish all of the different elements of this story. Uh, they introduce Biff or Buff or what's his uh, the older brother's name? Buzz? Buzz. Buzz. As, yeah, I was right. Your girlfriend. <laughs> Woof. Woof. Buzz establishes the spider right up top. No, I fed him a whole bunch of guts and stuff. He's going to be fine for a couple days. Like, we know about the spider. We know that the phone lines are down. Although, Mr. McAllister does get through to leave a voicemail on that one neighbor's answering machine when the wet bandits are currently in that house. By the way, for our young listeners, an answering machine is a device that's connected to your landline (laughs) and it answers a phone after only so many rings in order for a person to leave a voicemail that's recorded onto a tape. Make sure you eat your vegetables or you're going to get your phone taken away and you're going to get an answering machine instead. (laughs) And yeah, they set up all the stuff. They conveniently get rid of that whole giant family. They establish all those characters. His passport and airplane ticket are thrown away in the milk spillage or the soda spillage. Right? Look what you did, you little jerk. (laughs) All the power goes out, so the alarms are off. The neighborhood kids in the van, just in time for the head count. I mean, I can go on and on. Right. We get rid of Fuller so nobody realizes that he's Macaulay Culkin's, obviously Macaulay Culkin's brother. What do you mean that's obviously? That's a, that's a Culkin? Of course that's a Culkin. Which Culkin that's is it? That's the Kieranist Culkin I've ever seen. That's Kieran? He's, he's basically Macaulay Culkin with glasses. Shut up. Are you, are you, you verified this? No, you can't tell me to shut up. It's please be quiet. I'm looking this up. It is Kieran Culkin, no way. So Kieran Culkin, <laughs> star of HBO smash hit Succession, go Kieran Culkin. But you also know, I mentioned in another episode, you know there's like six of them, right? Yes. There's Macaulay and Kieran and Sheboygan. Rory. And Rory and yeah. Yamahuji Polka. Polka, Polka, Polka. <laughs> now you wouldn't know that one. Dakota. <laughs> Dakota Culkin? Just Dakota Culkin. Quinn Culkin. Christian Wait, Culkin. Wait, you're, you're serious? It's not like I was thinking Dakota Fanning. No. Macaulay Culkin is the fourth of eight children. Five boys and three girls. Eight. Man, There's eight of them. Tough competition. I mean, you figure it's like the Phoenixes, right? Or, or the Baldwins. If you breed enough of them, one of them will be ultra successful and the others can piggyback off of that. <laughs> Who is the ultra successful Baldwin, pray tell? Uh, well, it was Alec. I guess. Oh. All I'm saying is eat your vegetables, kids, so you can be the smartest, strongest sibling to achieve worldwide fame and carry the rest of your family. And hopefully they won't steal all your money. Wow. Dark. Wait, so let's talk about John Candy because is he not pitch perfect in that introductory scene in the airport? For those who don't know that were born in the 2010s, John Candy was the big guy, the polka king of the Midwest or whatever. Polka, polka. That Kevin's mom, polka, polka, <laughs> polka, that she rides home with. And he was with Macaulay Culkin in Uncle Buck which was also a John Hughes movie. All, neither of these directed by John Hughes. And that's why Macaulay Culkin got the character of Kevin in Home Alone, because John Hughes, the writer, had worked with him before and needed an eight-year-old. And after auditioning, lots of kids decided that he was the best one. But John Candy was Uncle Buck and was in another John Hughes movie, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Available now. On which this character, yeah, At orwhatevermovies.com. Right. Except for that one scene. Earmuffs for that one scene, kids. Anyway, his character, Del Griffith from Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, is kind of like this character that he plays in Home Alone. Except not the Polk King? Right. And he also plays the clarinet. Wasn't that your instrument? It was for a brief moment. (laughs) Until I decided that I would rather dress up like a ninja on Sundays and run around the apartment. And mom said, fine, you have to tell him that you don't want to take clarinet lessons anymore. So he showed up for the clarinet lesson. And because I was going to tell him something embarrassing that I was ashamed of, I wore my ninja outfit to do it. And I told him, I don't want to take lessons anymore. And in my memory, he said, fine, quitter and left. No. Were you traumatized? No, I didn't. Want, I just didn't want to do it anymore. Aww. I would rather run around like a ninja. And look, look where it got me. Yeah, and you Nowhere. ruined it for me, by the way. Mom and dad were like, well, that didn't really work out with the first kid. So let's just scrap the whole music lessons plan for Iris. Yeah, poor Iris. What'd you do? Go cry to your horse? <laughs> 
Good one. Yeah, not a, they're not like fake movie Christmas kids. He did wear Christmas sweaters and stuff. But Kevin is a real kid and a tough kid. I am upstairs, dummy. And he can be mean to his mom. And he can wish his entire family away and eat chips while jumping on the bed. Fine. Well, I think I've, I've used this line verbatim. Maybe you can ask Santa for another family. <laughs> yeah? Did you do it in that same tone of voice? <laughs> I mean, the iciest, coldest, pitch-perfect performance by Catherine O'Hara. I mean, not quite as icy and cold as the Shovel Slayer, but still, she's great. She plays some pretty goofy characters in her mockumentaries and stuff, but she plays Mom as Kate very straight. And yet she's got wonderful comic timing, like when she barges in on that French woman on the uh, payphone or when she's at the ticket counter. <laughs> yeah. And you can oh, you s- got a ticket there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that must be really nice. And the whole and the whole time that woman's standing behind her, that uh, background actor, what's the nice way to put it? Not uh, looks like Elvis. No, I know. Yeah. Background actor. Looks like Elvis. Yeah. That background actor was like, didn't get a word in. But is standing behind her the whole time, rolling her eyes, like, what is this woman talking about? You know, there's a full-on conspiracy that Elvis is alive, and the evidence is that he's standing behind her in the airport. Is it that particular background actor reincarnated as Elvis? It's not the lady, but no, people are suggesting that that dude is actually Elvis, (laughs) who at that point had been dead for 10 years. If you're wondering, kids, Elvis is a singer who died like 30 years before you were born. All right, let's talk about Home Alone as it was when we were kids. This is hearkening back to when Uncle Wessie was your age. Actually, I was kind of older. I was like 14 years old when Home Alone was released. But still, this is the very one of the very last movies that I learned almost phonetically. Like I would chime in with some of the dialogue because I remembered it so clearly. Did you do this? On a few occasions. I mean, it's like, what's his uncle? For some reason, he has all the lines. Uncle Frank. Like, Fra- yeah. Uncle Frank's, look what you did, you little jerk. And also, yeah, fill it up. Fill it up. No, fill it up. Thank you. <laughs> that. <laughs> exactly. I remember the t- the intonation of when he says them more than I did the dialogue in a way that was really surprising to me. Because I realized while watching this movie this time how many times I've seen this movie. It's not one that I revisit continually. I probably haven't seen this movie in a dozen years because I know it so well. I was a little bit too old for this to be like a formative movie experience when I was a kid. But there was a lot. I almost forgot the Slovel Shayer, Slovel Shovel Slayer wow. subplot. Say it. Say Shovel Slayer slub, shovel. Sub, subplot. <laughs> shovel Slayer subplot. Say it fast. <laughs> shovel Slayer subplot. <laughs> Slub plot. <laughs> you forgot about what are you talking about? How can you? Old Man Marley's reun, reunion with his family is like the heart of the film. Yeah, I think that was an afterthought late in production but it does work they did find the heart of the movie but that's not the stuff i remember i remember a snap off your cojones and boil them in motor oil <laughs> what is the what does the store clerk say to uh jimmy the whitest store clerk ever jimmy stop that boy and suddenly they're in the 1950s for some reason yeah there's a lot of chase scenes in this movie and he does get out of the house more than you would think Has adventures out on the street and stuff. Yeah, he goes grocery shopping. He goes to church. He goes sledding. (sighs) By the way, that's like the most dangerous sledding ever. Although I think we did stuff like that. It's a good thing that that was performed by a stuntman who looked like Macaulay Culkin but was 30 years old. Was he a little person? I'm pretty sure that he's diminutive in stature. But it's kind of obvious, especially when he's like sliding into the treehouse and stuff. There weren't many times when Kevin got hurt. It was much more Harry and Marv, who also yeah. both had stuntmen. But uh, the point I was trying to make is that looking at this movie from a kid's perspective, some of it is difficult to understand, I would imagine. I mean, most of the people, there was apparently a bunch more stuff filmed in France with the family where everybody was awake and worried about Kevin, all except for Buzz, who was sound asleep because he hated that little punk. And... The daughter, like, talking to the dad at night about how he was all worried 
whether Kevin was going to be okay. And nobody liked that. Everybody wanted to get back to Kevin and keep following the Kevin story. Huh. But I remember even as kind of an older kid watching this that I never understood the iconic hands to his cheeks screaming that he does in the mirror. Oh, you didn't understand the uh, mechanics of aftershave? Right. There's no way that baby would understand the mechanics of aftershave and the woo. So let us explain it for them. The reason that Kevin is screaming in the mirror is not because he's been left home alone and because he's scared, although that's what it seems like. And certainly that's how it's depicted on like the cover art and the poster and stuff. But in reality, he's screaming like that because he supposedly just shaved his face and doesn't understand how much it hurts when you put aftershave on your cheeks. So you splash the aftershave on your cheeks after you shave that has alcohol in it and it hurts because it burns the little tiny cuts in your face you get from shaving. Does it really hurt that much? I mean, no. But if you're if you're shaving and don't know how to shave and you're a little kid and he doesn't have any hairs to shave off anyway, so how do you know when you're done? If you put on that much aftershave, it's probably going to sting a little bit. <laughs> But I feel like that's entirely lost on little kids who have no concept of what it is to shave. Right. That said, for a kid's movie at Christmas, this movie is ultra violent. There's full on machine gun murder in this movie that happens multiple times from which he derives direct inspiration and booty traps his entire house. Yeah, you know, Kevin himself assesses that he's watching garbage, right? I'm eating junk and I'm watching garbage. But why does Kevin, I get Harry and Marv, but why does Kevin have to mess with the poor innocent pizza guy? Like just for fun? You know why? Because of the overcharging. I don't care who you are. At 12 bucks a pizza in 1990, you're getting ripped off. A hundred and twenty-two fifty for pizza? That dude deserved to be knocked down a peg. 12 bucks, 10 pizzas. Dude, it's 2021 and pizzas are five bucks, especially in multiples. So there's lots of any one of those things those guys could have died. There's no way to film those pratfalls and stunts on ice. It's not possible. This is one of those movies that if it were a YouTube video, it would need to come with huge disclaimers. Do not iron people in the face. Do not swing (laughs) paint buckets at your family. Do not walk upstairs in icy weather even. I mean, some of these weren't even traps. Some of these were, no, that's not true because he did ice, he did water the steps down, right? He did. And Auntie Amy and I were debating on the pizza guy and if he was just a really bad driver or if that's what it's like to drive on ice. Yeah, I had to learn that the hard way in adulthood. And so I don't think that that recurring gag of knocking over the statue, which is really effective and funny, by the way, That was probably based on real life. In one take, it just happened, and they were like, yeah, let's keep that. No, I'm pretty sure that that was the genius of John Hughes, because the van that came to pick them up for the airport shuttle also hit it. Right. (laughs) Don't drink and drive, kids, especially on ice. Wow. So is it worth noting that both Kate and Peter, the parents, have five kids, and that Uncle Frank and his wife have at least four? Yeah, it, it wasn't super clear whose kids were whose. Kevin is looking at the McAllister family picture at one point, and there's definitely five kids. Yeah, and Buzz is his brother, despite looking nothing like him and being more in temperament like Uncle Uncle Marv or whatever, Uncle Frank. He kind of looks like Bill Paxton in uh, Weird Science. <laughs> Stewed buttwad. <laughs> Which I watched recently. Didn't hold up. That's a movie that you should wait a little bit longer before watching, guys. Until when is appropriate to watch I'm just Weird saying Science. maybe not for the five and ten year old set. Okay. What would your little maniacs like to do first? Oh, shouldn't you have an accent when you say that? I can't do it because then it makes it weird. You haven't done any impressions this episode. I'm very disappointed. Sure I did. What did you do? I am upstairs, dummy. That was a spot on Kevin right there. <laughs> um, For a movie that you claim is classic and enduring, why? I think this is the Christmas movie that kids want. It's not about the joy of Christmas. It's about the kid having fun and the kid getting to be a grown-up and then the adventure of guarding his home against robbers. It has some of those heartwarming family elements, but for the most part, the parents are sidelined and the kid gets to be on his own. The kid gets to be the hero. The kid gets to have a lot of fun while saving the day. The kid gets to solve old people problems. In in some cases, very old people problems. (laughs) 
and he gets to eat whatever he wants. I mean, that's pretty much kid fantasy number one. And you would think that this would be a small little movie that would be, you know, a $10 million Christmas movie about a kid having fun. And I think that's kind of how it's remembered, you know, and you get all the kid elements that seem fun and pretty simple and straightforward. Is a little bit daring. I mean, it was pretty violent and people got burned alive and, and... <laughs> I mean, he. I mean, in Home Alone 2, spoiler, at one point, Marv gets, like, electrocuted into a skeleton. But uh, Like cartoon style? He, I mean, he gets electrocuted, and then, they like, there's the flashing lights while he's being electrocuted from, like, the shorting out circuit box or whatever. And at one point, it's a skeleton in a Marv wig. <laughs> so you get all the kid stuff. And then for the adults, you get the traditional John Hughes holiday road trip movie with the mom and the polka kings. That's right. I mean, you said that this was uh, maybe at the time it was positioned as a little as a little movie, but with some heavy hitters here. I mean, John Hughes was already John Hughes by the time Home Alone came around. Chris Columbus at the helm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, all his biggest hits were kind of behind him. This was his last massive worldwide hit. So like recognizable heavyweight talent behind this movie just happens to be fronted by a unknown kid. Only newly discovered at that point. And of course, Macaulay Culkin's appeal endures to this day because of Home Alone and Home Alone 2 featuring Donald Trump. But yeah, really strong characters and actors in the movie because as bumbling and funny and slapsticky as Harry and Marv are, Daniel Stern and Joe Pesci are great actors and really, really good in their roles here. Right. And Catherine O'Hara, legendary comic actor. And John Hurd is also really fabulous as the dad. When he pauses and he says, oh, that's it. I forgot to close the garage. <laughs> You just know yeah. that he's so in for it. And she settles back down and she's like, yeah, no, that's not it. They're all great. Really great performances. It's cute. It's crisp dialogue. Um, I don't think you're going to get better than Macaulay Culkin in terms of delivery, especially given his age. You're like, wow, it's a super standout performance. But he just falls in line with the, you know, the rest of the supporting cast. Like no one can really be faulted. I mean, I, I Macaulay Culkin's... Uh -oh. No, I think Macaulay Culkin's performance is serviceable, but you, you can tell he's a little kid. They're kind of setting him up and pulling the string. He delivers the line. You know, he's a little bit puppeteered. Like You can tell that Chris Columbus was like, look here, and then look here, and then say this. And he can do all of those things. He can hit his mark. He can deliver the line. But he's still a kid actor in this. He was literally the one pulling the strings. He was the puppeteer for all the adults in the Christmas party that scared Harry and Marv away. <laughs> right. And there's they don't even try. They don't even attempt to have him be operating that thing. He's just dancing. It's cute. He's got one leg up and he's just dancing. It works. This is Kevin McAllister's universe where everything is skewed towards working exactly the way he wants it to. Who are you to suggest that this movie it stretches the, the, you know, suspension of disbelief? I am Iris from Or Whatever Movies fame. And I am entitled to my opinion. And I'm just counterweighting you because you're all gushing and talking about how great this movie is. And I'm not really sure why. I'm saying he is the center of gravity and everyone else is orbiting around him. And he has to see this through to the end for, I guess... His moral redemption, because he's kind of a punk little kid, but in the end, he understands how much he wants his mom back and how much he wants his family back, even if he doesn't necessarily need them back because he's obviously doing fine on his own. He's doing so fine on his own, in fact, that when Shovel Slayer comes in and bonks Harry and Marv over the head with a shovel, knowing that his parents aren't home, he still pieces out and goes home to hang out with his granddaughter and leaves Kevin alone to wake up on Christmas. This morning without his family. <laughs> yeah, I never really thought through that one. At that point, Kevin's so independent. Look, it's a really fun, really clever, really sharp John Hughes adventure movie in your own house. It's the Goonies in your living room. And for that reason, I give this movie what I consider to be a surprising totally as a Christmas kids movie. Aww. Because it's not standard Christmas. It's not standard kids' fair. It's just close enough to the 80s to where he does all kinds of outrageous crap and gets away with it. Outrageous what? All kinds of outrageous stuff. 
I'm sticking with my 1990 John Hughes, Chris Columbus, who would go on to direct the first Harry Potter movie. I'm sticking with a totally rating. That is our review on Home Alone. A totally from Wes, a good from Iris. Wes's Christmas gift to the universe, 1990s Christmas kids movie classic. Let us know your favorite holiday movies at orwhatevermovies.com. 818-835-0473. That's a phone number. What's that thing over there? He goes, la, 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 (laughs) la. No context, but that's funny. (laughs) That black thing over there, the what? (laughs) You just post the video, then people will understand. Stick with your family, kids, and don't do drugs. We hope that you have happy and safe holidays. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. You filthy animals.